No problem. Thanks for hand, uh, for having us out today, Randy. Um, and thanks to, for the invite, Central Region. Uh, just me today. Jim got pulled into a meeting. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound clear. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so first off, I want to thank um, well Andy Nash and um, and Dan Cobb for their original work on getting this thing going. Um, we're five years into the WSSI, and this all came from their uh, their brains a while ago. Andy's kind of the the father figure of the WSSI, and we kind of picked up the torch where he left off and are moving forward. So thanks to those guys, and thanks to you guys for having us out today. Um, and I also want to say thanks to Central Region in general for adapting the WSSI last year um, to all, all the offices. Um, this is year two for you guys. So this, this presentation has been tailored a little bit to as more of an update what's new for 2019 than as opposed to a here's the WSSI. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started. Um, we're going to go over um, what's in WSSI version 2.0 is what we're calling it now. Um, the changes uh, um, that were implemented um, in 2019, uh, including the new colors and definitions, uh, updates to flash freeze and snow climatology. Um, the biggest change is going to be to the new web page. Uh, and then I'm going to provide some link locations um, uh, later on in the presentation as well. So as a refresher, um, the goal of the WSSI, the Winter Storm Severity Index, is to summarize multiple winter weather impacts from a storm into an easily consumable graphic. Um, this is based on 72 hours worth of forecast data. Um, it's also broken into 24-hour periods, so you get the day one, day two, and day three timing effect. That's new this year. Um, the data, I want to stress, comes from the NWS NDFD. This is your guys' forecast. Um, this is a tool to just kind of highlight uh, the impacts from your forecast. Uh, it's updated every two hours um, from the NDFD server. Uh, and the summary um, WSSI graphic that you see, what we refer to as the overall WSSI, is a composite of the maximum impact of any of the six components, which includes snow amount, snow load, ice accumulation, blowing snow, ground blizzard, and flash freeze. So uh, what is in version 2.0? Um, first off, we implemented it on October 4th, 2019. Um, so you get what you had, this is basically what we had last year, the 72-hour summary and component graphics. Um, now we have the addition to have imagery from the CONUS, FEMA, state, and CWA level. Um, there's also the 24-hour breakout summary um, and component graphics for, so summary and components, 24-hour breakouts now. Uh, the data is also in KML and shapefile format. Um, that's at the CONUS level. Uh, and that's also in not only the 72-hour summary, but also in the daily um, day one, day two, day three format as well. Um, we've updated the snow climatology and the flash freeze index as well. Um, but uh, I wanted to, sh to showcase here first before we get into those changes, the changes to the definitions and colors. Uh, these improvements were based upon input from social science engagements over this past summer. Um, participants included Jennifer Sprague and Danielle Neagle from NWS headquarters, Greg Shore from a AFS, Jim Nelson, myself, um, our, NW, our, uh, our WSSI national team, as well as two of our summer intern students, Alyssa Canastrosi and Amanda Wagner. Um, so their, their input was very valuable. Uh, Alyssa's going to graduate school right now to work on winter weather messaging uh, and social science with, uh, with, with the meteorology, which is, so she had some really cool ideas to share with us. We matched the color curve to other NWS hazard efforts, um, which includes that green to purple scale. Now, we were told by um, all the social scientists that we worked with, green means go, don't use green, don't use green. So we've substituted that um, with a light blue. But otherwise, it matches the, the current uh, hazards work, um, yellow, orange, red to purple. Um, we've also removed mentions of watch warning criteria and more focused, uh, and we're more focused now on, on impacts of daily life and threats to life and property. So the first component change um, for 2019, uh, we updated the flash freeze index. Um, in the past, we've been using a one-hour um, temperature change with a six, within a six-hour QPF block. This led to a lot of errors um, pointed out by the field. Basically, it was highlighting where cold fronts were moving across the country, which at times were useful, but most of the time was not useful at all. Um, so now we're using a three-hour average temperature. Um, this is um, effectively going to cap the flash freeze at a moderate impact. You're going to be able to get major and extreme impacts out of the new algorithm, but it's going to take a very highly unusual scenario. Um, 
it's going to help mitigate the problem where you have a, a, a temperature that slightly rises above um, freezing, and then uh, there's a quick steep drop of temperature, all within the same six-hour QPF uh, block. The real problem here is we are confined to use a six-hour QPF, um, and that temporal issue is not going to um, be overcome by this change. Um, it's just going to help mitigate that problem until we can use one-hour temperature, which hopefully that will happen in future builds. Uh, just to highlight here what the changes are going to look like, um, uh, we had a good case of this actually earlier this week um, across the eastern part of the U.S. Um, notice that when it came to the city's peak area, this flash freeze has been removed by the changes to the algorithm. And then note across uh, Wyoming and Montana, a big reduction in signal. Uh, still showing that there is a potential for a flash freeze to occur, but not this huge, large um, overcoverage of extreme, which was the issue. So the national team um, felt good about those changes, and so they were implemented uh, earlier this year. Moving on to the snow climatology. So um, once again, we worked closely with field offices. I want to give a shout out to um, particularly the Boulder office and the Marquette office for some of the changes that were implemented this year. Um, it's still using the same uh, statistical two-day snow climatology that was used last year, but um, we've introduced a little bit more quality control. Um, within that 50-year data set, the station must have at least 30 years of data. Um, what this did was it slightly reduced the number of stations from 5,900 down to 3,900 stations, um, but it also increased the influence of the first-order stations. Um, pardon me. Um, another change that was made is we were using the average of max plus mean two-day snowfall. Um, when we were over the summer, when we were re-analyzing um, the, the snow climatology, we found that just using the maximum two-day snow uh, climatology left the minor and moderate impact levels very vulnerable to um, the thresholds were too high, especially for areas with frequent amounts of snow, uh, such as the um, the Lee of the Rockies and the Great Lakes. Um, so by adding the, the mean plus the max, into, or the mean into this calculation, it opened up um, a much more reasonable curve, uh, which had much better correlations to the uh, moderate and minor thresholds while maintaining um, good correlations to the major and extreme thresholds. Um, this reduced, the primary outcome of this was it reduced the minor threshold in snowier regions. And this was a direct um, um, teamwork effort uh, by a response from NWS offices. Um, so we, once again, really appreciate the partnership there. Um, the collaboration was great. Um, and one other small change that I made this year is um, we're still using the uh, empirical, empirical Bayesian Kriegian regression, um, but we've, I've, also some, I've also done this algorithm over the river for, grouped by river forecast centers. Um, this helps improve um, the results just a little bit more. And it, and it really, the big benefit here is um, you saw um, uh, improved results in where different regions had similar statistics. Um, so it, it just was a, a slight improvement there that, um, that was implemented. Um, for the 2019 season, this is the minor threshold for um, the WSSI as far as snow amount is concerned. Uh, this is the moderate threshold. This is the major threshold. And this is the extreme threshold. Uh, this presentation will be distributed out um, to you guys as well. Um, uh, this imagery will be included in the, uh, um, the internal WSSI document, which I link to here later coming up. Um, so I wanted to walk through some of that feedback from the Marquette office to, um, to highlight how it was too difficult to, to reach the minor moderate threshold um, for a case um, that occurred uh, last February here, 12th through 14th. Um, so on the left here, this is using the old uh, methodology and the old uh, symbology as well. Um, on the right, this is the new symbology as well as the new uh, methodology applied. Um, if you look at, if you follow my cursor here, this was really the area of concern was the Upper Peninsula. Um, there were some areas of limited that they really felt should have been moderate, or sorry, at least minor if not moderate impacts. Um, using the updated climatology uh, and the new methodology here, uh, the, 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 we got the result that was sought here, um, big improvement and increased coverage of minor in the yellow shade here and uh, moderate coverage in the orange there. So they, they were pleased, the office was pleased with that um, result uh, as we were as well here at WPC. 
Um, another new thing you're going to see when you go to the WSSI homepage is it's now the CONUS perspective on an interactive dynamic map. Um, the tabs here are click clickable, and they load the WSSI component upon click. Um, they are going to default open to the days one to three, or the, to or the, the summary um, of each of those components. Uh, but when you click on each of these day tabs, those are going to load in the specific daily data for each of the or each of the day forecasts for each of these components. Um, you're going to also have a zoom uh, drop down box here that will zoom right to your WFO. Um, you can also uh, print out whatever um, image you want to create on your screen using the WSSI. You can include these map overlays down here on the bottom, which I'm going to get into in just a second. Um, and then once you hit the print map button, um, your overlays your zoom level, your transparency, and the definitions will be captured in a PDF image. Um, there is links to the static images for your office as well as the CONUS perspective, which I'll touch on here in just a second. Uh, and uh, also off of this home page, there's links to the KML and shapefile directories. And those are updated every two hours as well. Um, as far as overlay options, here on the bottom, you can toggle these on or off. The default is off. Um, but you can include um, CWA, CMS, state boundaries, urban areas, RFCs, county boundaries, public forecast zones, and the ATCC for uh, boundaries as well. Um, and if you're curious about what the actual print image will produce, if you click on this user WSSI user guide, uh, it walks you through an example of how to how to generate a, an image from this website and what it will look like. So um, some links and locations. Um, so the WSSI homepage here I have um, at the top link um, the static images. Um, we were going to forgo static images, um, but we conferred with our national team and they felt very strongly to keep the static images this year. Um, uh, they, they, they said it was much more easy to, to brief with. So we've included, uh, we've continued to produce those. Um, however, we're only produce, able to produce those at 1Z, 9Z, 13Z, 19Z, and 21Z. Um, for storage concerns, uh, but those are available at this um, uh, WWD slash WSSI images directory. Um, we also are continuing the uh, WSSI static image archive. Um, that's going to be available here at the link below. That does require, um, it is NWS only, and it requires the WPC WWD credentials to log into that website. Um, as mentioned, the GIS data updates every two hours. Um, it's in KML and shape format. Uh, please note the shape files are all in a zip are in zip directories that you'll have to unzip on your end. Um, I wanted to highlight another feature here real quick. Uh, we have an interactive story map um, that's available off the home page here, this interactive Esri story map. Um, we put this together as a training for, uh, not only for the offices, but also as something to direct toward the public as well. Um, this map, this interactive story map goes through what the WSSI is, what its components are, um, how to use the 24-hour the, the breakout periods here uh, with this looping GIF. Um, and it also has this, these interactive maps that people can zoom in. Um, and uh, as you scroll through it, there's uh, imagery and um, definitions for each of the components. So we're excited about this as a new training material um, and look forward to feedback on it as well. Um, and we're going to have some success stories and some additional information added um, later on uh, this season. Um, I also uh, wanted to point out that um, off of the WSSI homepage, there's a link to the public survey as well. Um, um, and we don't have this link off the homepage right now, but um, where my mouse is going right now here, the NWS internal survey, this is a, where, from an office perspective, we'd love to get your feedback on, you know, how components worked, how components didn't work. Um, you know, we'd like to hear stories from you guys in this area, you know, how, how, how have you used it with your partners, um, what feedback they've given you, that kind of thing. So uh, we'd encourage participation there. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, and uh, thank you for your attendance, and uh, I'll take any questions at this time.